everyone, it's Nona Grace, and I'm from Western New York. I got a fair amount of questions, and I thought I would answer the questions. I did answer them in the comments section, but some of them have to be elaborated upon a little bit because you, it's kind of hard to tell the story if, in a, just a few words, and I can't type it. He's going to sleep. Are you going to sleep? I'm not going to sleep. I'm just listening. <laughs> He's just listening. Okay. Well, one of the questions was, they wanted to know, are my siblings as cheerful as me? Well, I do have happy siblings, but I don't have as happy as me. <laughs> I will show you a picture of um, the one in red is probably the most, he's like a clown. He would be the funniest one. And the one next to him in the black, she is comical. Then the rest of them are so-so. Mm, okay, this is okay. This one is the funny one. He, he's a clown. He really is. And she, she's up for fun. He's um, kind of serious. He can be pretty serious. She's very serious. And then there's me. <laughs> if they see this, they're going to say, oh my. Oh yeah. I put you on. Okay. And this is the order of age. Oldest. Next. Next. Then me. Then Anita. And then Lucy is the youngest. Okay. And when we all were at my mom's funeral, I don't know if I showed this or not. But my mom wanted us all to dress in bright colors. So you'll see a lot of, this is at a funeral, so you'll see a lot of brighter colors. But this is just some of my family. There's still people missing from this. And it's my brothers, sisters, their children, their wives, and then a few grandchildren are in there. And I'm, I'm in this group right here. In case you want to know, I'm right there. They also wanted to know, let me go to the easier questions. Oh, would I ever consider getting a goat? Well, that subject has come up. We've thought of it because of the land. But you know, they've got bobcats around here. And if nobody's down there, that poor goat would, would um, probably be dinner for the bobcat. And um, there's also coyotes. And that would be a problem. Um, and then somebody's got to take care of it in the winter. That was the real big problem because I didn't want to do that in the winter. And my brother that would have done it probably, he gave his house to his son so he doesn't have the barn anymore to do it. So I don't think we're getting goats, no goats. But we did talk about it. We did think about it. Um, why did I stop doing daycare? My parents were up in years. Uh, my mom was... My dad was 90 and my mom was 82, I think, or 80. I think she was 82. And they and they needed somewhere to go. And my brother Joe called me and he wanted to know what we should do with them. Well, I gave him three suggestions. The third suggestion was, well, they could come live with me. And that's the one that he was hoping I would say. Because when I was 20 years old, he actually said to me that if mommy and daddy ever need to be cared for, I was the one because I was working at a nursing home like that gave me experience, which it did. But so I, I gave up the daycare. I gave up foster care at the same time. And my parents moved in and they lived in part of my house. And they lived there. My father had died here. My mother, she lived here until just a year before her death. When she got Alzheimer's, we had to do something so that she was safer. I did have family member come and watch her prior to that but she used to lock her out because she was suspicious of everybody so when you get suspicious of everybody it's time to go to a facility where you don't know anybody but yet it feels like home so that's what we did we ended up taking her to a facility um and foster care was it long term or short term well most of them were short term i was considered a last chance home the foster kids that I got were mostly teenagers, and they um, had been in a lot of homes before mine. That bells are bonging and it's distracting my brain. I'm not doing so well this time. I did better with that siren that went by the other day. But anyways, they were they were in, they had been in a lot of foster homes, and um, 
by the time they got to me, it was their last chance to make it in a foster home. Otherwise, they were going to have to go to an institution. Well, we had probably about 100 or a little over 100 children that had come through our doors, and only three of those had to go to an institution because they were just... There was no no changing, no matter what I did. And I was a very structured home, but it still didn't do the trick, so they ended up going. And do any of them keep contact with me? Yes, I have a few that call me and a few that say they want to come back and live with me. But they're now, these kids that I had, they're all like in their late 20s, early 30s, they're, or, or, 40s. or 40s. They're old children now. They're not teenagers anymore. Um and if I, could I do anything different? If I could change something, would I do anything different? Most likely not. I'd probably make the same mistakes and do the same thing over again. I probably would not change that. Um, there was quite a few that wanted to know, how did I meet my husband? And he laughs. laughs. I met him roller skating. I was, a, I was really good on roller skates. I used to go roller skating three times a week. And when it was ladies' choice, a lot of times I would hide in the bathroom because a lot of guys, I don't know what their thinking was, but if it's ladies' choice, the lady's supposed to ask you. They're not supposed to ask you. So if I didn't see anybody that I wanted to skate with, I used to go into the bathroom and just stay there until the song has pretty much halfway through and then nobody would bother you. And so um, Jim happened to be at the skating rink one time, and it was ladies' choice, and I looked over and I thought, ah, that guy doesn't look like he's going to bother anybody. Because once you skated with some guy, usually, he thought that you were his girlfriend all night long, and I didn't want that either. So I went over and I asked him to skate, and he skated with me, but he didn't even pick his feet up. He just weaved them in and out, in and out, which was all right, but... He made it around the, the room, and I just did my skating so that I was with the music. And then the next time I went, he was there again, so I asked him for a lady's choice again. because It was about my fifth time skating, actually. Yeah, you hadn't gone very... He'd, uh, he was not a skater. He was just happened to be there. Um, but he there was another lady's choice, so I asked him to skate, and then he asked me for a couple's skate, and then that was the end of that. Then the third week... I asked him for a lady's choice. He asked me for a couple's skate, and then he asked me to do the home skate with him. And at the home skate, he said, do you ever come on Saturday? And I said, no, are you crazy? Because Saturday was where all the wild kids were, the crazy music was. I went on, I mean, no, not Saturday, but Friday. He wanted to know if I'd come on Friday. And I said, no, that's when all the craziness is. I go on Saturday, Sunday, and Wednesday. So we, we went skating, um, on a Sunday, I think it was, the next time. And I always wanted to drive myself because if he picked me up, then he'd think I was his girlfriend. I didn't want to be his girlfriend yet. So I would say, I, I will meet you there. I'll be there. I'll drive myself. Well, this one week, he shows up at my door. And he said he would drive me skating. And I said, well, if you're going to take me, you're going to have to take my sister too because I always take her. So he took me and my sister skating and then brought us back home. And then it was after that that we kind of, I guess, got together and decided that we'd be boyfriend and girlfriend. Okay, now this was probably the end of October and the beginning of November that all this was going on. Then January 1st is when he asked me to marry him. And we were at a New Year's party and he actually said, if I wish I'd known you longer, I'd ask you to marry me. And I just kind of laughed it off. I thought, how oh, silly. Well, then the next week he says to me, do you think about it? And I says, think about what? About getting married. And I says, you were serious? And he was serious. So I said, well, then I guess I better think about it. So another week went by, and um, we met up again. at the skate. We were at the skating rink, and I said to him, well, you're going to ask me? Because, you know, I didn't. You're going to have to ask me again if you really want to marry me because I'm not going to just say, yeah, okay, I'll marry you. So he says, oh, do you want to, would you marry me? And I says that I would. So then he wanted to um, ask my parents. So trying to get my parents in one room was like a fiasco in itself. My mother would walk in and my father would walk out. My father would walk in and my mother would walk out. And it was like we couldn't get them in the same room at the same time. So when we finally did... 
my he we told him that we were getting married and then he asked my dad if it was okay and my dad said are you sure you want her <laughs> and the way my dad would say it, it was funny we kind of laughed because it sounded like I was just pure trouble are you sure you want her so from the time we met to the, then we got married July 26 1980 so we will be married 39 years come this Friday we will be married 39 years Somebody else wanted to know if I thought, if I knew it was my forever partner. You don't know that. My first year was my worst year, so you just don't know. Um, you just don't know. You just have to work at it, I guess, and let each other do some of the things that they like to do and don't try to change them totally, although I did change them. <laughs> can give advice but don't take it don't take my own whatever but yeah so we that's how we met at a skating rink and it was a long time ago and so we really only dated about eight months from the time we met to the time we were married it was very very and we had a big Italian wedding and we did the tarantella at it and we had the cookies and the we had the peanuts on the table where the peanut shells would go on the floor it was a it was a true wedding we haven't had a, a band a live band because at that time DJs were not you didn't use DJs the the live bands cost probably as much as what a DJ would cost today just to spin records or spin computer music um, and it was it was a good wedding we had um, wine punch we had a fountain with the wine punch and there was beer too because we're not big drinkers so we did have that available for those that did want to drink and then after the wedding my father tried to bottle the beer you can't bottle beer it goes flat because he had a bottler he had he has the the like if you wanted to make coca-cola or something he has he had the bottler and the capper but it just didn't work with the beer the beer went yuck so that was how we met so that's it i guess that's today's video it almost didn't get up get made well, the video would have gotten made, but it almost wasn't going to be posted tonight because the internet had gone completely out. I called the phone company because ours is through the phone company, and they had 300 people without internet service, and we were one of the 300. So, And it's back on, so I can post this so you will get to see it. So I'll talk to you all tomorrow. Bye.